Hello, hi, I'm Jason. Hi, I'm Julie. And um, we thought we'd just do a quick update video. Whether anybody's interested in this stuff, we don't know. But we, uh, we did one of these um, a few months ago before we sort of embarked on a, a sort of lifestyle change for us. Um, and we thought we'd just do an update now, just say how things are going, so you've know, got some idea of what's happening. Mainly because we've got free Wi-Fi where we're staying. <laughs> yeah, we've got free Wi-Fi. We haven't. We've not had actually unlimited internet access for um, six weeks now, something like that. So uh, we're making the most of it, and we'll upload a video. I think the previous one we did, by the way, I got the same shirt on, but I've got more than one shirt. You have to, you know, just have to believe me. And in the previous <laughs> one we did, I had hair, but I since had it all shaved off for charity, so it's grown back. It's about an inch and a half. It, that was six weeks ago, so um, it raised fourteen hundred pound for charity, so it's worth it. So if some people might be watching this, haven't seen any of the other stuff that we've done, so just a very brief sort of overview of who we are. Um, so like we said, we're, we're uh, Jason and Julie were both 43 um, and through pursuing a, um, a path of financial independence we've effectively retired so we don't need to work anymore. Um, we've not had a big windfall or anything like that it's just all through learning how to invest and uh, we've got some properties and we've got some solar PV arrays on the roofs and which pays a little bit and things like that that um, pays enough money that we can live a lifestyle um, which doesn't involve the need to have to go to work. That doesn't mean we'll never go to work again. It means we've got the option of never going to work again. So it's sort of a subtle difference. And it doesn't mean we're rich. So, well, it depends what, how you define rich, but um, our lifestyle is based around a budget of £15,000 a year spending for day-to-day -day living and travelling. So that's about £41 a day, just to give you an idea of where we are. Yeah, there's a definition, um, Robert Kiyosaki's got a definition of um, richness in terms of wealth and that's the wealthier you are the more, uh, the longer you can live without your salary and we don't have a salary so effectively we can live forever. Um, in some ways we are rich. Got enough money coming in. Yeah, in that, in that sense we're you know as rich as they come. Um, there's people who are much richer than us who can't, who can't do what we're doing, they have to go to work every day and we don't. So... Uh, yeah, so um, what's that like? So the last time we did a video like this, we we hadn't actually decided we had actually stopped working. So I, you'd stopped working, but I hadn't stopped working. So we'd still got the business going. Mm. So we had a con IT contracting business that we both worked for, um, which we've now closed down. So uh, do you want to do a little bit? Of how, how it feels? feels? It's we we originally went travelling about four or five years ago for a couple of years. Um, but that was a trip of a lifetime, um, so it was quite intense, whereas this time we're much more relaxed about it, but it's surprising how quickly it's become normality again, just not to get up in the mornings, but, well we, we have an alarm to make sure we do actually get up in the morning, but not to have to go to work, it's now to go to work would be abnormal, this feels perfectly normal. And it was brought home last night, we Skyped some friends, free Wi-Fi. Uh, it was Sunday evening, they're all gearing up to go back to work, the kids are at school tomorrow and we're sort of like, oh right, yeah, we, we don't have to get up, but it doesn't seem wrong. It seems like the most perfectly natural thing to do. But at the, but at the same time it sort of feels surreal as well, like it, it isn't, how can this be happening to us? You know, we're, we're sort of like from normal families, normal backgrounds, how on earth have we sort of like ended up like this? I don't know. I mean, it was all very deliberate what we did. You know how we sort of set our life up, um, and yet all the same, it doesn't feel like going off all the things that you see in the media. I mean, the latest stuff they're talking about people not retiring until they're eighty, which is just like what? Eh? Uh, how was that? And I think a lot of it's just down to sort of lack of financial education, which we we suffered from the same as everybody else. But we just sort of had something to prompt us in our life. Um, to make us sort of look into it and work out how it all worked, so um, so it's it just feel it just still feels surreal, really. So sort of saying the words that we're saying just feel very odd, but it's our life. But it's working, you know. Yeah. We're keeping a track of the numbers, and we track everything that we spend, every penny gets written down in my diary, that gets transferred to a spreadsheet, which amalgamates it on a weekly, monthly, annual basis, and we're on target at the moment. Well, it's better than that, really. The, 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 
it's actually insane. This we I remember meeting some people who'd done it in a different way to us, but they um, some really good friends of ours. Um, and when we met them, they were in a motorhome in San Sebastian, and they pointed out the fact that they were getting richer. They were actually getting richer while they were travelling, and which just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Because as we as we understood it, as we the more we travelled, the less we earned, and the more of our cash we spent. We didn't understand anything about investing. So. Um, because of the fact we've got we've got three houses back in the UK, if the housing market goes up by anything at all, in real terms, we're getting richer. We're actually getting richer. If it goes up by three percent a year, we're probably making about ten or fifteen grand a year more than we're actually spending. But that's investing. That's how it works. If you can work out, um, you know, something that works for you. I mean, on the flip side, is the housing market might go down, and we kind of, you know, we get poorer in that sense, but. We're not going to sell them, so it's just numbers on paper at the moment. We're not going to sell them for a long time, no. So, um, so how does it feel to you? If I can, I can, I'm always sort of like on the sense of euphoria, thinking, what on earth? So, so a bit from my background, my dad worked down the mines, down the coal mines, to to make enough money, you know, to put me through university and stuff like that, and. Um, and my mum worked in factories, um, so they both had pretty hard times of it. And they they, had, they ended up retiring before the normal sort of retirement age because they had to really because the body just had it. Um, and so to me, the idea that someone can stop working in the forties and live a comfortable lifestyle, travelling around as much as they want, um, is just unreal. It's just unreal. Uh, and sometimes I honestly feel a bit guilty about it. Although that, a little I do, I do. I still feel a little bit guilty that, you know, we, we don't have to go to work, and, and most people do. Um, but it is like it. It's a lifestyle choice that we've made. And it's it is, it is. And there are but the sacrifices, that people will call it sacrifices. I think of it in terms of, say you were, um, say you're an athlete and you, you've you got a particular goal in mind that you wanted to compete in a particular competition and, and achieve a certain time. To you, would would the fact that you couldn't eat chocolate puddings every day, would, would that feel like a sacrifice when you've got that goal in mind? Um, I don't think it would. You know, I think if you've got the goal or something that you really want to do, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice to you to not have something um, that is going to sort of deviate you from that goal. And so for us, if we wanted to go out and buy a new car every year, we would be back to work straight away. We just wouldn't be able to afford to do that. Wanted to eat out every night, we'd probably struggle. Yeah, it might depend. I mean, we could if we change things a little bit. So some of this stuff is like thinking outside the box. So if you if we went and lived in um, Asia somewhere, we could probably eat out three times a day with the amount of money we've got coming in, mm. and live in a three bed house with a swimming pool and and not have a problem. Um, so we're travelling Europe at the moment, which is a relatively expensive part of the world. If uh, you can hear a strange snoring noise, that's our dog Charlie, who's just behind the camera having a little kick. There he goes, right on cue. Um, right, uh, wrapping it up, being quite quick now, because I think it, the camera's going to run out of battery. Very well planned. Uh, where we've been, we set off back end of January. We came over to France. Uh, we nipped to Luxembourg. We went south to the Alps, pootled around some ski resorts for a little bit to have a bit of experience in the snow, play with the snow chains, brush snow off the roof of the van, which we didn't do. Badly. Badly. Um, yeah, get cold, keep warm in the van, get cold outside. Um, then we saw the Kandahar, the men's downhill skiing in Chamonix before coming through the Mont Blanc tunnel into Italy. And we've sort of pootled our way kind of south in Italy and we're now just south, uh, well we're just up the road from Marinello, which is where, is it Marino? Marinello? Yeah, Marinello, yeah, Marinello yeah. where they make the Ferrari cars. Yeah, and then um, so from here we we can go where we want. Really, we have considered at one point when it got a bit cold, let, let's just go to Sicily and get some warmth. But um, our, our overall plan is to get to the top of um, Norway this year to Nordcap, um, which is far inside the Arctic Circle. But we'll do it in the summer, so we'll be nice and comfortable. Um, so yeah, so we'll go up through the Baltic states at some point. We'll cross over to Finland. We'll go up to the top of Norway, um, and then we'll come down through the, the we're going to see the Lofton Islands and then we'll come down through the fjords 
um, back in through Sweden, Denmark, and then we'll come back round and go back to the UK for a bit before coming out again. So I think we've already got a plan um, for next year. Um, January the winter, time. January yeah. time to go down to North Africa again to go across over to Morocco and uh, spend the um, the winter in Africa. Which sounds again sounds a bit surreal saying that, but that's that's it. That's how it is. Uh, even more surreal is after that. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So that's it, really. So we've we've got a blog um, that's associated with all, all this stuff. So if you have a look at ourtour.co.uk, says o u r t o u r dot co dot uk. There's contact details on there. So you, you know, feel free to get in touch with us. And there's loads more videos on our YouTube channel, Facebook. Oh, you you won't be able to get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doke. Thank you very much. Take, Take care. It easy. Cheers. Bye.